Love it. kitchen, isn't it nice? It's really hey. nice. Um, along with the wonderful Fern Cotton. Hey Fern, I've managed oh. to uh, replace Jyla, I've uh, upgraded, which is nice. Thank again. you, thank you. Um, I'm very happy to uh, to be Jyla's upgrade. Yeah, and it's lovely to have Fern back in. And tonight we're going to be cooking up a delicious family favourite. We're going to be doing the veggie penne bolognese. Excited? So excited. I love a veggie bolognese. Who doesn't love a bolognese? Exactly. And this is a really good one for kids as well. So loving it. 100%. And probably about 30 minutes, 35 minutes. We That's can do that. Good, isn't it? Yeah, that easy. Recipe. Great. Four or five portions. Awesome. So if you're cooking along at home, go get your bag out of the fridge, get your ingredients ready. We're good to go. So we're going to get started in a minute. First thing we need to do, pop the oven on. Okay, 200 degrees. We've got ours. Pop them on there. Good to go. Done. Um, done. Easy, isn't it? So good in this kitchen. It's great. It's just like near. Yeah. It looks it's, nice. It's Look at the organisation. I'm a Virgo. I like yeah. everything done a certain way, and that is very pleasing to the eye. Isn't it just? It fine? is. Oh, isn't it just? As if, as if it was just there. So look, don't forget, guys. You can win one of five signed copies. You are going to sign them. Aren't I you? promise. Yeah, I will do it. We've got the yeah. sharpie ready. Um, Fern's going to sign one of these. So all you need to do to be in the chance of winning is actually just comment below. So. Um, ask any sort of questions you want. Let us know how you're getting on with the recipe. Um, we're going to be talking all things food, all yep. things vegan, all things health, wellness. Probably touch a little bit on COVID, lockdown, yeah. everyone, sort of managing, all of that sort of stuff. But right now, Fern, let's get started Peeling. On cooking. Peeling, please. If you could peel both uh, carrots for me. Okay. Watch that hand. But please then, don't. <laughs> and then we'll also uh, dice up the carrot, dice up the courgette. Okay. okay. So, okay. guys, if you are cooking along, so yes, one of our family favourites, this delicious veggie bolognese um, with penne. We have five every single week now. So what we've done, Fern, is we've actually gone, surveyed all our customers, spoken to all the guys in the community, gone, what more do you want from the family recipes? And actually, overwhelmingly, they said, look, love the delicious recipes, love the sort of experimental, you know, different recipes, etc. ingredients, but actually, my children just want a couple of firm family. A pasta favorites. dish. A pasta bolognese, please. <laughs> so All kids just love pasta. Exactly. Who doesn't love pasta? Exactly. I love it's the so, best. Um, but we've actually got chickpea pasta tonight. Oh, do you know how much I love chickpea pasta? It's um, it's so dreamy. And this is the sort of thing where you can make a little swap like that and your kids have no clue. Yeah. They do not know they're eating chickpeas whatsoever. Kids have no clue. Jessie no idea. No clue. Jessie has no <laughs> idea. As well. But yeah, so we have uh, five of these every single week. Um, so yeah, take a look on the menu, get them in. My children love it. Sienna loves it. Um, Great. You know, I bet Rex, honey, they'd like this as well. Rex is, I have to feed Rex a lot of food. So making, especially after school, getting a big bowl of like lovely veggie pasta in him is, is the way forward. This kid is huge. He has so much energy. He eats a lot of grub. So yeah, perfect. And as you can see with this meal, actually, there's a lot of ingredients here, aren't there? Like there's a lot oh, of food. Good colour. There's a lot of good food. Exactly. A lot of colour. And as we all know, as we've always been told, colour equals health pretty much vibrancy. It? Yeah, vibrancy it's vibrancy yeah. i think i've i've sort of been thinking about this a lot like especially over lockdown how you know we've all been sort of thinking about health but sort of thinking about vitality and 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 vibrancy and, and all of those sorts of things is um we often overlook it so yeah i think getting a good colorful diet is is so important is that dicing up to your standards yeah that's good i was gonna okay. say fern you're putting in a real shift tonight because there's a lot of dicing okay, going I'll, on. I'll do it as quickly as i can <laughs> no, no you're all right um what we will do i am actually going to pop the pan on um i'll pop a bit of oil in there and just start it going because what we'll do it actually the recipe says to um you know dice everything first but actually when the carrots are done we'll get them straight into okay. the pan because they will take, they take a, bit a bit longer than the courgette exactly, don't they exactly um, I think Barrington, uh, one of our sort of favourites. They're going in? Yes, please get them in there. Um, hello, Barrington. Good to have you with us. Remember, guys, do comment, leave us some questions, and you'll get a sign. You might be able to chance of winning a signed copy from Fern. That is a very good book. Um, we actually did a little partnership, didn't we, a couple of years ago? We um, put some of the recipes in the book. I was really it? chuffed about that. It was it was so lovely that we got to work together in that way. So thank you. No, I appreciate no, people that. People loved it. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, you know what's nice is. Um, it's cooking with no children shouting at me. I just can't, it's sort of so <laughs> I relaxing. Can't. I can't work out what's going on. No one's saying mum. I can't promise that. There won't be any shouting Please. As we go. Okay, you can <laughs> shout at me. Just no kids shouting at me or arguing nearby or throwing things. Like, don't yeah. throw things in the kitchen. No. Please. No, please leave it alone. Please. So how have you been? You know, Really good, yeah. actually. You know, like everybody else, I think it's been the strangest sort of time. And it's been, there's been, you know, challenges with working from home and homeschooling, which is, let's face it, impossible 
utterly, utterly impossible and awful. Um, but I feel really lucky that I've, I've sort of been able to carry on working and I really enjoy my job and, and what I'm doing at the moment. And we've, we've got a new set of challenges because more people are sort of struggling with, with new things because of lockdown. So we've got a lot more work on our hands with Happy Place, looking at new ways to sort of, you know, open up conversation around mental health, um, you know, make what we're doing as sort of widely accessible and talked about as we can reach more people and yeah we've got we've got a lot of work on our hands but lots of fun projects in the pipeline right cool okay, so going in. project going in yeah talk, okay well let's let's talk a bit about happy place because so for those of you who don't know fern has another sort of project best way to describe it yeah i mean we can we can almost say brand i brand, think yeah well, yeah brand, okay yeah. yeah very nice um called happy place and you know actually did a some very cool festival, didn't you? Actually? Yeah, we had. Well, we we, we, would, have, we would have. Well, we had a digital one last year yeah. because obviously we couldn't do it live. But um, we had a we had two big live events, London and Manchester, in twenty. What would it have been? Nineteen. Right? Yeah, well, your time is just blurring, isn't it? Um, and then we obviously had to sort of think on our feet last year, so we had a month-long digital festival, yeah. but with a similar variety of content, you know, covering all sorts of different classes and, and workshops and talks going on and well, we so fun. fun. Yeah, you did some cooking, that. which yeah. was brilliant as well. So yeah, we've got we've got stuff in the pipeline within sort of, you know, looking at live events starting up again. But um, we, we launched our Happy Place books last month. So we published yes. our debut book with this amazing new friend of mine, Lawrence. I think I can call him a friend. I mean, I think he's my friend. He might think otherwise. Yeah, I've, I've um, heard, I've heard, yeah I think <laughs> you can refer to him as a friend. I adore him. He's called Lawrence Acoli. He's an amazing world champion boxer who's just got the most brilliant life story and amazing mindset. So that was our first publication. And we actually are releasing our second publication tomorrow, which is with um, a scientist called Dr. Olivia Reams, who's a professor at Cambridge University. And she's written a book called The Mood Fix. And it's just looking at all the different negative moods that we easily fall into and why and looking at ways to help us move through them. So it's a really fascinating book. Um, so that's been a really good thing over lockdown as well. Just for the guys cooking, Fern's just going to dice up some of that garlic then we'll get that into the pan as well for about three, four minutes along with, I think you see some parsley as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you quickly glossed over the Lawrence Covey story there. I mean, was, it, was, he, was he working at McDonald's? So Lawrence Covey was working at McDonald's um, as a teenager. He was um, clinically obese. He, he didn't really feel like he had any particular goals or drives. He kind of said, you know, that he was thinking maybe he could be the manager of that particular um, McDonald's. And that, yeah. that was kind of where his dreams ended. And then literally by chance, one day, he was watching the TV in his lunch break and saw, it was during the Olympics, and um, Anthony Joshua was boxing and he, he just stopped in his tracks and went, I want to do that. But not only I want to do that, I'm going to do that. Yeah. So obviously he's got quite a lot of people around him going, all right, mate, like good luck with that. Because he was 18, he'd never done any sort of sporting activity before. But he quit his job and then just became the most disciplined human ever. Went vegan literally overnight from working at McDonald's and eating tons of burgers <laughs> to having a completely plant-based diet and training so hard. And four years later, was fighting in the Olympics mad, in it? Rio. Such I mean, it's story. crazy. And it. he's just got an amazing attitude to life and to resilience and hard work and discipline and, and also just getting yourself in a positive mindset and realizing that you know oh sorry i forgot to do that i'm too busy chatting that you can um that you can really you know you can you can change your mindset you can change parts of your life that you know and and just sort of giving people the confidence to believe that so it's a beautiful book that i'm i'm so happy we got to publish yeah i'm definitely going to get one of those i'll send you because I'll send i love you. i love the story i love is this going in? Yes, please, get it in there. Anything with sports, anything like an underdog hero yeah. story, which is exactly that. I love that. And I think actually there's probably a lot of like good messaging people can take from that, especially from the last 12, 18 hugely, months, right? About hugely. just you can actually go and change your like life. But he's still doing it now. You know, he wasn't like, oh, okay, now I'm a professional boxer, that's me done. He is undefeated. He has stayed absolutely true to his word, so focused, so disciplined. And, you know, the proof's in, in the outcome. Yeah. You know, he's an undefeated world champion. And he's just a lovely person. He's so nice. Uh, so I'm, I'm really happy that we, uh, we got to publish that. And we've got a few more books coming out this year. And I'm writing 
my own as well again, which is huge process <laughs> that I keep yeah. forgetting how huge it is. And I go, oh my God, I forgot how much hard work this is, but it's, I'm enjoying it. It's yeah. all good. I, I'll be honest, um, I put ours off a little bit longer. But really? I'm going to start there, book number two. I'm going to start this year. I've already got well, you've had a lot of stuff hard. going on. We you've have had a lot of stuff bit, going yeah. on. <laughs> um, right, guys, so at home, what have we done? We've uh, now got the courgette, carrots been diced up, gone in with the garlic, with the parsley, and then we've also got the basil in there as well, okay? If you keep me up, we'll leave that for about three or four minutes. Flem, do you think you could half the tomatoes for me? I can do please? that. And then we've got a couple of questions from um, Myra Cart first. What's been your favorite family recipe to cook at home over lockdown? Oh, um, you know what? It, it probably is just a pasta dish because it's so hard. You know what it's like with kids? And I've, I've not only got, you know, two young kids, but I've also got step kids. So yeah. often everyone wants to eat a different thing and at a different time, so it is tricky. So having something like a pasta dish or soup, which you can then batch cook and freeze, so helpful. Yeah. So there's one soup that all the kids will eat that I make at home, which is a sweet potato, carrot and red lentil soup. It's really easy. They dip toast in it yeah. and great. So Fair I'll enough. serve it with something else too with them, you know, like pasta or chips or whatever. But that's that's been a good one that everyone will eat because usually i end up making three to four different things because yeah. honey wants a variation of what rex is eating blah 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 but but something like this like a pasta easy it's everyone's gonna eat it ages, isn't it, it is like Jesse yeah it yeah so we'll all eat it we'll all eat it um right fresh tomatoes i'm going to get those in quickly um and then do you think you'd roughly chop the sun dried oh, do you know how much i love sun dried tomatoes it's like don't eat them oh i could eat them all in. right now like olives sun dried tomatoes they're all that. heavenly <laughs> um, my no. favorite things right uh hannah firm what are your top tips for ensuring children feel heard and can express their feelings for good mental health oh, cooking along gosh. with Harris three and adeline is um six Thank you. Oh, what a good question. Hello man. to all of your lovely family members. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm definitely no expert in this one. I'm much like everybody else. I'm, I'm stumbling through parenting <laughs> like everybody and trying my best. And some days I feel like, oh, yeah, I nailed it today. And other days I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I need to call my mum. Like, you know, you just feel all over the shop. But I think it's difficult, isn't it? Because my son is eight and he's at the age now where... He doesn't want to kind of freely offer up information. So even after school, like, hey, what did you do? It's the most boring question. Or tell me one funny thing that happened today. Often he's so reluctant to tell me anything. Yeah. And it's really tricky. And I think you just have to sort of maybe not give up. And also know that they will come back around. Like, you know, I see it with my stepkids now. My stepson's 19 and he'll text me and he's up for chatting on the phone. And it's really lovely. But there are certainly phases of everybody's life where that it goes and you have to just not really I guess worry too much because it's so normal um but I guess also like well eating around the dinner table is one of the best chances to have that chat isn't yeah. it so we will usually sort of say when we're sat having dinner like tell me one funny thing that happened at school or the best thing that happened at school or who was cheeky in your class today or whatever and just try and have, you know, give them the space to sort of chat about stuff. And some days they don't want to do it. You know, some days Rex is like, oh, it's so boring. I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> um, whereas Honey is much more up for sort of chatting yeah. about things. But I think you just got to not, not worry too much if they're not willing to say stuff because all kids go through that phase. I think just not being too tough on yourself as well, right? Like, oh I think God, we live in that absolutely. age of... Absolutely. Everyone wants... You know, somebody comes around, your house is always going to look immaculate. Yeah, I know. Or like, you've got to put on Instagram, I'm always doing the... But look how happy my child I know, is. And I like, know. sometimes, I've got two little ones, and sometimes you just got to, you know, you wing it a little bit, don't you? And sometimes it's Every okay. Day. They need to sit and watch a bit of TV. Sometimes yeah, oh my God, fun. all the time. Like, if like, you know, but also I feel like just letting them play. Yeah. You know, like, it doesn't always have to be structured fun, structured no. learning. Actually, or children, with you involved. Just play, yeah, exactly. Like, this is a new way of looking at parenting, isn't it? Like, more recently, in the last 10 years, we're, there's this pressure, we have to do everything with our kids, like we've got to make something out of clay and then build them a train track. And it's like, when I was growing up in the 80s, I, I honestly can say, and this is no offence to my parents, because I love them, my parents didn't play with me once, ever. <laughs> do you know why? Because I'm really busy working about four jobs each, so I was in my room, I was happy as can be. I was playing Barbies, putting the Barbies in the bath, having the best time. I reckon you were there like, welcome to Top of the Oh, I absolutely was. No, I was <laughs> making cassette tapes of my imaginary radio yeah. show where my brother had the bit part of being like the weatherman and it lasted for 10 seconds and then it was back to me again. 
Um, but it's such a weird sort of newfangled concept that we have to be doing everything with our kids. Like, oh my God, I'll be this um, character and you be that. And it's like, we don't have to do that all the time. Like, they also do need space to learn on their own. It's getting a happy balance and Absolutely. we shouldn't... And we need to try and eradicate like the guilt factor of being a parent because there's much guilt placed on us. And it's like, we're all trying our best. Exactly. We're all doing our best. We're all giving it our best shot. And that is literally all you can do, I think. But you, we, like you say, Miles, we have to be kinder to each other, yeah. to, to ourselves, sorry, to ourselves. We have to be kind to ourselves and be like, you know what? I did a good job today, pat myself on the back. Or, okay, I didn't do a brilliant job today. It's all right, I'll do a better job tomorrow. No biggie. You know, none of us are perfect parents. None of us are perfect people. We've just got to get on with it and be nice to ourselves. That looks delicious. Right. So everyone at home, sorry, we keep chatting. (laughs) So uh, what do we do? We've got the sun-dried tomatoes in as well. Everything's pretty much in now, bar the broccoli and the uh, pasta. But what we um, need to do, also add in. Yeah, I think it is going to go in. The chopped tomatoes are in as well and the lentils, okay? And then also we need to get the tomato puree. Yeah, which you did forget, but you're pretending you did. Stop it, Fern, please. Tomato thought we said we wouldn't do in. this. I have to get Giles back in. Uh, <laughs> right, okay. So that's going to go for about 10 to 15 minutes. And what we want to do, just pop your kettle on, make sure your oven's hot because um, could you please just uh, tail, tail, tail maybe? Yeah, tail the broccoli for me. Definitely don't top them. Off. Don't, don't top, top the good bit off. <laughs> exactly. Um, nice. Let's see. Remember, guys, do leave a question for uh, myself or Fern and we will. You will be up for a chance of winning one of her lovely Happy Vegan cookbooks. There are some amazing recipes in here. There's some good kid Went ones in there. So well. Good kid ones. There's some good um, cakes, if I do say so myself, which is... What's, you your, know, fa- what's your favourite vegan cake? Uh, just a straight up vegan chocolate cake. Chocolate. Uh, like, there's a chocolate fudge cake in there, actually. But um, My kids are not vegan. They eat anything. So I, I want them to sort of decide as, when they get older what they want to do. But cakes are a really good way if you've got a kid that's lactose intolerant or you just want to experiment with plant-based cooking cakes is a great way because it's just a cake it doesn't taste any different doesn't look any different it's literally just a cake so it's a good way of starting with plant-based stuff i always think all biscuits biscuits (laughs) yes um right let's get the uh let's get the pasta on so that'll take probably about eight minutes or so um let me know if that gets too hot for me turn that down okay and then it's what we'll dreamy. do is, could you pop the broccoli in there for me, please? And then we'll pop that one in the oven. Yeah. It'll be about 10 more. <laughs> there you go. Whack that in. There you go. What's that lovely. Uh, Claudia Shiel, mum guilt is so real. Love this idea of being kinder. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, mum guilt can do one. We don't need mum guilt. What, what does it achieve? <laughs> what does it do? Where does it get us to? Nowhere. It's absolutely pointless. And we only feel guilty when we start comparing ourselves to other people and we go, Oh my God, look on their Instagram. They've just, you know, got their kid to eat kale or whatever it might be. Or their kid's on like the purple reading book and mine's only on the red or whatever. Doesn't matter. Do you know what though? I did, I did figure out how to get Sienna to eat like green salad. Go on. Bella Zoo, like balsamic vinegar. Really? Balsamic, balsamic, balsamic. balsamic. Yeah, Rex loves a bit of balsamic. Loves it. Yeah, and she'll yeah. just sit there, eat it, cucumber, everything. She's just like, I've told people this before, but if that's, it's if you want to get them into it, that's what they like. Mm, yeah, that's Rex that's loves that. balsamic. He likes he likes uh, roasted chickpeas with balsamic on, and then he tips more balsamic oh, over the top. It's probably not a great idea, but he <laughs> absolutely loves it. Um, right, okay. Broccoli has gone in. That'll be about 10 minutes. Everything's about 10 minutes now, so we're good. So we'll just chill and chat, actually, and answer okay. all your questions. Okay. Giles, partner in crime, tell Fern her recent Happy Place episode with Dr. Alex was brilliant. Such a nice Oh, Gilo. Thank you, Giles. That is very, very kind of you. Um, yeah, he's what a lovely man he is. Yeah, 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 yeah serious, like serious topic, I guess. It was but, because he's but, had a really awful time. Yeah. You know, he lost his brother. It was really, really sad. But he's he's using all of that pain to sort of motivate him to do something brilliant. And um, and he's you know working really hard to ensure that young people feel more mentally prepared to go out into this weird world that we live in. So, yeah, I really enjoyed talking to him massively. Thanks, Charles. Thanks, Charles. Good question. Um, right. Uh, do you have a morning routine? Good question, that. Uh, yes. My morning routine <laughs> is... Uh, my morning routine is I get into the kitchen and then I put the kettle on immediately because if I haven't got a coffee going into my system within about 15 seconds, <laughs> I am upset. But then I have to go through this whole thing. This is not my chosen routine, may I add. I feed the fish, 
I then feed my two 20 year old cats who have a plethora. 20 years yes. old? Yes. What are they doing? Are they moving? Or well, one of them literally sleeps all, all day. But the other one's super active. She's always out. But they have a whole host of vitamins and pills <laughs> that I have to give them. It's like having two old women in my house. So I go about doing all their little bits. And then it is chaos for like an hour and a half yeah. of making the kids breakfast getting their fruit snack prepared, get their bags, what uniform are they wearing, sports or regular. It's just chaos for an hour and a half. So that's not my chosen morning routine. <laughs> my chosen morning routine would be glide into the kitchen, slowly slurp a coffee, chill out and, you know, might do some yoga or might even read a book or whatever. But this is in a fantasy world that will not happen for the next 18 years. Yeah, so yeah. for now it's giving cats medication and being shouted at. You children. had it before, you gotta wait now, haven't you? You get it after again. I'm in no rush, it's all good. <laughs> um, bang, then. I guess that is the rice pasta is so good, I can't tell the difference other than it kicks for a third of the week. That's a very true bang to me. This, this is lovely. chickpea though, isn't it, this one? I believe so, yes. But they're all good, aren't they? I often this give my kids chickpea. the brown rice pasta, because again, they don't know, do they, what it is? And um, it's it cooks much quicker and it is delicious. Yes. Uh, Pamela, my daughter's lactose intolerant, vegan cake ideas actually taste nice, are a godsend. I like the idea of vegan meals which I could sneak into my arsenal. Well, we said that, didn't we? Because yeah. like in terms of vegan meals sneaking in, because um, Jesse, Jesse's vegan, vegan, I'm vegan. vegan. How long has he been vegan? Same two years? Both right? nearly two years, yeah. nearly two years. Rex is actually lactose intolerant. He has like the odd bit of dairy here and there, but it, he has a sort of skin reaction. So we try and, well, we use just oat milk for cereal, hot chocolate, stuff like that. And the rest of the time, it's, it's relatively easy to sort of avoid it with other meals. He eats a lot of sort of chicken and potatoes and... What's he having for breakfast? I for guess, breakfast, I make usually, well, they're going for a phase of really liking crepes in the morning. Love it. Yeah, like, so we were going for a fluffy, yeah, we were doing a fluffy pancake thing for a while. And again, you know, you can make those so that actually the crepes aren't vegan, they've got an egg in, so I'm not eating them, but the kids are, and I'll just use oat milk. So a load of oat milk, regular flour, one egg, that's literally it. Make it super thin so you can get a really lovely crispy crepe. Yeah. They love it. And then sometimes, actually they had a bagel, I think they had bagels today, bagels through, we'll just switch it up whatever I'm any, any day. Yours, but yeah breakfast is a big one that's pretty good well also because i'm always worried that honey doesn't eat the lunch at school so i oh, try and give her a massive breakfast because she's quite fussy still yeah she likes things a certain way she's, she's not got, she's what five five, five yeah she's, so she's got funny food age, combos yeah. she likes there's certain things she will not eat chicken i do not like chicken you know they're very like definite i will not yeah. eat it so i always think if she's had a really decent breakfast then i can send her off thinking even if she just picks at lunch she'll be yeah, okay, she'll be okay like it um what else have we got what are your okay so two questions here. i think we just had one about vegan so fern's answered that one well what, what are your non-negotiables before bed to like get you into oh, that mindset of, i'm going to bed i've got loads look tips? i'm i'm an unusual person at the best of times okay <laughs> yeah. i don't sleep well not a great sleep do you, you don't sleep well at all do you no actually? i mean actually i've been pretty good recently i've been sleeping better but I have to treat myself like a child before bed. So my phone goes off between half eight and nine at the latest. I'm not putting it on airplane mode, I'm turning it off. I don't want to even think about it. And it stays in the kitchen. It's not in the room, I can't look at it, I don't want to look at it. So that goes off because the blue light thing is not good for me. And then I need some alone time. So I go and have a read for like 45 minutes every night. That is an absolute non-negotiable. I don't ever go to bed without reading. I love it. It makes me really sleepy and gets my head away from all the stuff I've just done in the day. So reading and then <laughs> I have to wear, I have to wear an eye mask, guys, because I am 99 years old mm -hmm. and earplugs. Um, What's your, what is your eye mask? Have you got like a it's actually, like a boss, or have you got like no, no, flowers, it's actually you... gross. It's one that I've had so gross. long, but I'm so particular. <laughs> it's gross. it's a sort of a silky one, but it's grey and it's got all that old mascara on it. It's disgusting. And Jesse was like, "Do you want me to put that in the washing machine?" <laughs> no, I do not. I have to have everything exactly the same every night, otherwise I feel like something's different. So I have to have a certain pillow, one of those memory oh, foam yeah. ones. Oh, very nice. If I didn't have that, I couldn't sleep. Like it's ridiculous, but I have to have all the same stuff and the same structure and I go to bed really early. So guys, I'm reading at like half nine, quarter to 10. It's really tragic. I mean, I think it's pretty good, but like everything you've said, I think 
we all get told is like pretty good way to go, right? Like leave I mean, your like leave your technology sad. away. It's tragic that I, I, I kind of have to. I just know myself so well at this point in life that if I veer off that, it's bad news. Yeah. So I'm really nerdy about it, and it has to go like that. I need to chop that. Oh, for goodness right. sake. Last You're very one, lazy today, aren't you? <laughs> Emma, what's your food heaven and food hate? Good questions. Okay, so food hell is the simplest thing in the world, and it's like a lot of people out there. Coriander is not allowed anywhere near me. I can't <laughs> Why put parsley? stand <laughs> it. I hate it. Not a fan of celery either. I can deal with it cooked, but I don't like it raw. Everything else within the vegan spectrum, I'm really happy with. Um, food heaven, you know what? It, <laughs> this sort of thing, anything with lentils I love, like yeah. thick and chunky like I love. So that, I do love a decent vegan burger. Yeah. Can't be beaten with sweet potato chips. Um, Make it yourself or do you, do you buy some? Either, actually yeah. I made some last week with um, chickpeas and dried apricots and chickpea flour and I can't remember what I'm putting in now, but they're pretty good. Yeah. Um, or just get, well, I won't mention brands here, but there's some very good vegan burgers out there. Um, and but I've got a real sweet tooth, so yeah. probably my food heaven would be straight up chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. Heaven. That is chocolate heaven. Chocolate mousse or cake? Like dessert? Oh. Or cake. What are you saying? Cake. Cake, all right. Yeah. Is this going in? I was going to say, no, that's going to come in thing. I was right, going to say, okay. we've got some desserts coming out at some point in the future, so that would have tied in really nicely, oh. but she went with cake. So I'm saying leaving. mousse, guys. <laughs> mousse. I love mousse. Um, it's the best. Pasta, guys, if it is starting to stick a little bit, just add a little bit of oil in there as well. And that will Do you know what I had last that. night, actually? Um, I had, after dinner, the new watermelon smoothie that you've oh, done. Oh, yeah? Oh, my God, it's like being on holiday. They are good, aren't they? The really? Oh, I love the smoothies. Really. The watermelon one, though, because I thought, it's just going to just be really watery, but it wasn't. It was creamy, and oh, it was really good. Well nice. done. Good, I'm glad. John Cartwright, what have you read re recently that you'd recommend? Yeah, because I was curious, I was going, thanks John, because I was going to ask, what are you reading? Is it biographies? Is it uh, Well, thrillers? I Is do it... read a lot of books on well-being, psychology, yeah. stuff like that, because a lot of the guests I'm interviewing have written books, so it's always good yeah. to go back there. But I love autobiographies, I love biographies. I'm trying to think, what have I read that's been brilliant recently? Um, I'm reading a book about shamanism at the moment, uh, which is very interesting. Shamanism. But, yeah, sort shaman? of, no, being a shaman. So oh, like shaman. doing sort of like oh, amazing, Sorry. magical, <laughs> not shame, I don't read about shame before bed. No, mind you though, Brené Brown, who concentrates on the yeah. shame, is also amazing. Yeah. Um, but I've read some good other ones recently. So um, I'm trying to think what the last few are, I, what I've read. Um, I read a really good one called Malibu Rising, which I think is about to come out soon. I got an early copy. And it's the same author who wrote Daisy Jones and the Six. So it's brilliant because it's she's amazing. And um, it's called Taylor Jenkins Read. That's, that's okay. a brilliant, brilliant book. Um, God, what else have I read? I mean, I've had to read a lot of books for the podcast. I'm trying to think. Priyanka Chopra Jonas' book, because she came on the podcast. That was really good. Um, or obviously, Lawrence Acoli's book. It's fantastic. So it's generally, it's more, it's more like self-help, awareness, yeah, or it's like, yeah. or it's, or, or it's or biographies. Or biographies, yeah. Things. I don't mind the odd fiction. Like, there, there have been, I read a really good fiction the other day <laughs> called The Truant. Amazing. And I kind of know if I'm going to like it within the first page, I think, I'm in. Otherwise, I just ditch it. Whereas with autobiographies, I think you have to almost get through the childhood bit, and then it gets really interesting, doesn't it? Yeah. So you can stick with them. Oh. Giles, that? are you here? <laughs> that's is that your just oven? The oven? Yeah, that's just the oven. That's a really funky, posh isn't oven, it? isn't it? Yeah, it's Sings posh, to you, it? I'm ready. <laughs> um, right, nice. Look at all that this. Looks this looks so good, doesn't it? Good. Hey, look at the portion size on this as well. Yeah, that's a Rex size portion. I was going to say, right Rex will enjoy this. He would. He really would. Um, right, nice. Okay, so we've just got the broccoli as well. Let's see what, what else we've got. What um, what made you want to create your Happy Place podcast? Good question, Hannah. Yeah, great question, Hannah. Um, so, so the first, I guess I had this sort of weird career change in my early thirties, early to mid thirties, where I was sort of moving away from the the broadcast that I'd been doing for a long, long time before that, and wrote a book called Happy. And then I was like, where else could we take this? For people that don't want to read books, because there are a lot of people that don't like reading books or listening to audio books. Yeah. And podcasts have started to sort of gain a bit of momentum. By no means were they at the place they're at now. But um, 
so I started doing it and everyone was like, why have you left radio and now you're doing a podcast that no one's going to listen to? And I was like, well, because I just like, it feels good to do. I really enjoy long form interviews. So I sort of started off just sort of experimenting, like, is anyone going to listen to this? And luckily it's sort of snowballed and, and now we're in series 10. We start series 10 on next Monday and we've had amazing guests and I feel very lucky um, to get to eat it. We will get to eat it, yes. I was going to um, say, it's like, has it gone well? It's like one of the most listened to podcasts, I think. It's, oh, well, and thank it's season you. 10. Thank you. Yeah, no, like, we've, we've done all right. We've season all right. 7 was really good as well, I think. Oh, was that when you were in? Seven, maybe I don't remember. But, oh, it's um, nice interview you guys. Well, on, please, just sprinkle um, a bit over. But yeah, oh, it's it lovely doing to really have well. you guys And on. I think it's the the variety of guests yeah. and topics that you speak about is what I find really interesting about it and really enjoy listening yeah, to Yeah, we, we, you know, we've had some really good ones and we've got some nice ones coming up actually, like touching on some subjects that we sort of hadn't really delved into before. And I think that's really important for the whole Happy Place team to look at is what, what are we missing here? What subjects have we not covered? Who are we still not properly engaging with? Because we want to make everyone feel included yeah. in the conversations we're having. So that's a really lovely challenge for us all. But yeah, I just love doing it. I love doing it so much. It's so fun, fun, isn't it? Just it's chat, so just going to chat to inter interesting people. And on that point, Andrew so Crane has said, who's been your favorite person to interview on the podcast? Because I think that is the great thing. Actually, it's almost, I know, I know you do an incredible amount of work actually researching oh God, the people lot. and yeah, like, yeah, talking yeah. about it. But actually, when you get to speak to them, it's actually just Heaven. fun, isn't it? It's just it's like having a chat. It's nerve-wracking so. at times. Like, I, two that really stand out, there's, there's loads, but two that I've just thought of are Alicia Keys and Jada Pinkett Smith. So Jada was in real life because it was pre-pandemic, and I was terrified yeah. because she's, you know, this incredible woman that's done so much in her life. I'd never met her before. She had no clue who I was or anything about me. So you've almost got to sort of prove yourself within the first five minutes. Yeah. But we got about 15 minutes in, we just sort of clicked and we just had a really decent conversation. So I loved that one. And then Alicia was over Zoom because mm. that after, you know, lo first lockdown, everything just went to Zoom, which was so weird. And I thought, is this going to work? Yeah. You know, a guest going to want to do this. Next thing you know, I'm like looking in Alicia Key's house. Like, oh, that's nice. Like a <laughs> and, um, and we just had a lovely chat and she was so generous in you know, what she was willing to share and her perspective of life. And I loved that one. I, I mean, I'm a huge fan of her. So that was, so that was brilliant. I've always said, I'd love to go and watch Alicia Keys, like in an intimate like oh, setting like though. You know, like, I don't want to see the something. O2. No, no, it's no. just too big for like, well, it's not too big for her, obviously, because it's still amazing. You imagine. But I'd just love to see it in like a I know, I'm room. kind of gutted because when I was at Radio 1, she didn't come into the live lounge. So I didn't mm. get, because I've been lucky that I've had that experience with yeah. some amazing artists. like. Eminem literally rapping in my face. It's just me, and I'm going, oh my god. Um, and she didn't come in, so I, I too would love that experience. It'd be so good. Did you rap back at all? No, no. <laughs> I stood there going, on, search, tell everyone, give them the rundown. I was there just going. Mm -hmm. um, should we have a little bite? Oh just see god. what it is. If you're at so home, excited. obviously it's ready. So dig in. We'll just quickly answer a few more questions. I think. That is good, isn't it? Mm. And how easy was that? That was pretty, oh, I mean, so easy. we had two of us, so it was a bit easier, but. Um, you didn't do anything. What do you, I had to stir? Put the oven on. Did you not hear the tune I put on? Um, <laughs> Lindsay, <laughs> do you find it hard to eat at the same time as the children? I struggle to cook and get dinner ready for us all in time for them to eat when they want at 5 p.m. Yeah, so we eat at like, we eat at 5.30 all together. Mm. We didn't used to, this is more of a recent thing. When they were little, we would cook for them at five, put them to bed, be super relieved, and then eat really quietly on our own. And then like, now the kids are older, it, I do love eating with them. I mean, it's chaos, like Rex can't sit still, so he's like up, down, up, down. But even if it's a bit later than that, I just think I don't care. At least, you know, we'll get them in bed at some point, and I've already eaten, so I don't have to rush and panic. So sometimes it's a bit crazy if like one of them has an after school club or something like that, it all gets delayed. but. That's why having good quick stuff, like if you're just doing pasta, it's gonna take 10 yeah. minutes. And you could even make the bolognese in the day so I was gonna say, and then save it. I was gonna say, like one of the things we find easiest to do is actually just prep out a load of it earlier. Yeah. If you can, if you, I know it's hard, but if you can find like 15, 20 minutes actually, dice up those carrots, courgette, whatever, maybe you cook it later. Maybe as you say, actually just pop it all into the pan, 
cook it all then and then it's ready to go later on. Yep. So you can just find those pockets of time because yeah, you're right. Sometimes it's uh, it's difficult. If, like what you said, she, Fern was saying how happy you were to be in here without children shouting at you, right? So, nice. so it can be really hard at home to actually, so nice. to actually find If I'm time. cooking, I always put the telly on for them. Just like, yeah, you can watch Netflix, go for it as long as you like because then at least you get to do your thing and they're occupied. Yeah. Otherwise it's chaos. It's chaos, isn't it? Um, Kat Sims, I'm five minutes away from MC headquarters. Can I pop in to taste it? Mm -hmm. Kat, we've got two more portions here. Look how, big that, look how big that is. So, um, absolutely. Right, I reckon um, Fern and I are going to go and eat. I think all of you need to eat. As John just said, time to serve for me. Thanks all. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone who tuned in and for all the questions. It's been really fun. Thank you to you, Fern. Thank it's you. It's great having so you fun. in. I love it. It's so much fun to cook with you. Giles, I'll hopefully see you again soon. Um, nah, it's all right. Fern's coming in. Um, I guess, why not, um, as we're sort of, you know, hopefully coming out of lockdown, like, you know, it's all going to be happening. What's like, can you give anyone like a parting comment? Like, sort of, I don't know, some sort of positive yeah, message? Yeah, I can, I can actually. Out? Yeah, because you know what? There's all this kind of excitement that, you know, everything's lifting, which is in so many ways brilliant. You know, so many of my friends have had the worst 12 months. My brother, included my husband they can't you know there's been no work and you know they both work in the music industry and it's been bleak and um i've got friends and other jobs one of my best mates is an air hostess and that's been a really stressful troubling situation so i'm i'm so happy that that things will be going back to normal but with that comes this anxiety that we've got to be going out to restaurants all of a sudden or, or, or socializing or whatever and you might not want to do that I don't want to do that do you think I've been to a restaurant this is the first time I've been out <laughs> I'm not even lying I haven't been to a single pub garden at the moment I don't feel the pull to do that yeah. because it all feels a bit like rushed and like you, you've got to get there and you've all got to enjoy it and I just think I'm just going to take my time and when everything starts get a bit more back to normal I might then mm. feel okay but if you don't don't worry about it. it. Like, just do what suits you. And for me, I love being at home and I love being with the kids, family. I also love when they go to bed and reading on my own. But I love being at home. I love working from home. It suits me. It doesn't suit everyone, but it does suit me. So I think if you feel that anxiety and the pressure, just don't worry about it. You'll, you can be my gang. I love it. So don't feel pressured. No. Just do you. Be just relaxed. Just do whatever you want. Take your own time. Yeah. Love it, right. Fern's gonna go get her eye mask on and get ready for bed. <laughs> yeah. um, we're going to be back in the kitchen again. And Giles is gonna be with me actually. We're cooking up some barbecue recipes that come Ooh, on the menu, which is gonna be a lot of fun. I think it's on the 26th on Wednesday, mm. I think. So yeah, we'll be doing that from the new headquarters in Mindful Chef. Um, thank you everyone who's tuned in this evening. Thank you for all the brilliant questions. We will pick some winners. I will force I won't force her because she's actually lovely and oh, she'll definitely sign them anyway. But we'll get, make sure all the copies get signed and get out to you guys. And I hope for all of you who've cooked along, you enjoy the meal. For all of you who haven't, so you enjoy whatever you're eating this evening. And we look forward to seeing you all again soon. Thank you again, Fern, for coming. Thank you, Miles. And uh, we'll see you all soon. Bye. Right. See ya.